how to um, stitch a simple pantograph in Quilters Creative Touch Pro. So first you select pantograph and you'll want to set your safe area. You will get a prompt to do that. Always set your safe area at least a half an inch off of your quilt edge on the left and the right so that your pattern can stitch off the edge and that way all of your tie-offs are off of your quilt. It makes for a sturdier quilt. So this is the screen you will you will see. First thing you need to do is come to the bottom and select your quilt width. Mine's going to be 40 and your quilt height, let's say 50. Okay. Oops. 50. Okay. Now, um, you will see this is, this represents my entire quilt, 40 by 50. I am in power panto mode, which here, if you click this, you'll see all the different modes. And we want to be in power panto and select pattern. So I'm going to select these hearts. And Power Panto automatically fills in the hearts, nest them together for you and everything. It's just wonderful. Um, you can select this button at the bottom, show safe area, and see what is going to stitch within your safe area. I have my safe area set at 14. So <clears throat> at this point, you would want to change your pattern size. Each one of these blocks on the grid represents an inch. So right now this big heart is one to about three inches. You can make it smaller or larger depending on how dense you want your quilt to be. Um, I'm going to go way up because I want to show you a couple of other things on here. And I'm going to take this off. See right here where the pattern kind of crosses over, where these hearts touch? To make that go away, this is where you use your spacing. So watch as I press the vertical plus. See how they move away? And that's perfect. You don't really want to do the horizontal plus at this point because you can see that now we have a disconnect between the two patterns. So I'm going to put that back to where it was. And you can also um, click inside of this area. It would bring up uh, a keypad and you could key in a number. You don't have to always click these plus and minus, but it, it's good to do. Um, okay, once you get it how you like it, then you're ready to sew in zones. I'm going to leave it at 14 because I want to show you something. So always come over here to the right and select sew in zones. You always want to save your session. Trust me, when the power goes out, whatever happens, you'll wish you had saved it. So always save your pattern. Okay. This is what you do not want here at the bottom. See the blue lines? That means that this pattern is going to, for instance, right here, the machine is going to knot your stitches. It's going to sew this, knot, then it's going to skip to here and knot. And anyway, and it keeps on going, hoping that when you sew your next zone, that the hearts line up. This is not ideal, and you'll drive yourself crazy with it. So anytime you see this on the bottom, on the top is okay, on the bottom is not. So you go back, change the height of your hearts. You may only have to change them a little bit. And again, you want to save. Yes, I'm going to override it. And now, this is perfect. So this represents zone one, which you see down here. Zone one, and you get some information here to move your quilt to the center of your zone. So I'm going to say I'm moving my, um, my machine to the very center of my quilt, and this arrow represents the center of my quilt. Okay, And then I want to place that design right in the center, so you come down here and select this button and see how it moved the design over. The red area represents my safe area, and you can see I have several inches to the left and several to the right. And I have also um, set, let me go back here, total width and height. Let me point out that um, on this, I always add a little. So in reality, my quilt is 38 inches wide, by 52 inches high. So I have an extra two inches. 
And what that's going to do when I go here to Sew in Zones is, and I go to Place It Again, this design is going to stitch off about an inch off of my quilt. So this, would, this where my arrow is now is representing where my quilt is. So all of my tie-off stitches are going to be off of my quilt, which is what you want. Okay, so then when you get to here, you're going to want to pull your bobbin. You get an error message to make sure the needle is up. Click OK. You get another error message. Uh, not an error, I'm sorry, a warning. Uh, make sure the needle is up again. The machine takes a stitch and moves to the right. At this point, you hold the top thread and pull it up, and the bobbin thread um, will come up through the top. Then you move back, again you get that warning, and then you select Sew. And now you can clip those threads that you just pulled up the bobbin and the top thread. When you get to the end, over here at the right, you want to pull bobbin again. Again, you get the warning message. It tells you to hold the thread, continue and the machine will pull up your bobbin thread as you can see here and then you'll just clip those two threads. There's no need to tie them off because this is off of your quilt. Okay. The next thing to do um, before you press the finish zone button go ahead and physically move your machine over to somewhere around the middle of your quilt and then select finished zone you get a, a message asking you, are you sure you finished the zone, etc. You click yes. Is your needle up? When you get tired of seeing this needle up warning, just press do not show again. So now my machine physically moved to the point where my next zone should sew. So you need to mark right here. And there are three marking methods in the software. One is, that's what these dots represent. The first one takes a single stitch. The second one will sew an L into your quilt in basting stitches so you can take it out later. And the third pulls your bobbin and also sews an L. Okay, you don't have to use any of these if you don't want to. Um, I find that they take longer, so I usually slip a piece of painter's tape right under my needle and I have a dot drawn on the painter's tape with an ink pen. And the dot goes right under my needle. So I leave that painter's tape on my quilt. Um, never use a pen because you might forget to take it out and then you'll stitch over it and break a needle. So once you've made your mark, however you've chosen to do it, select continue and this is saying are you sure you want to um, continue because not all of the markers have been placed. That is because I didn't choose a marking method down here. So select yes. Now the machine is going to move again with the needle message. Once the machine moves, it will move up to enough space to where you would be able to stitch the, the next zone within your safe area. And you get this message, move your fabric. So now you'd want to roll your fabric so that whatever marking method you use is very close to this area where your machine um, is, where your needle is now positioned. And select OK and OK. Now what you want to do is with your needle, your needle may not be in the exact position you moved up. Let's say when you moved, you rolled a little too high. So now your needle is here. You'll want to click Release Carriage and move your um, needle to the right spot, right over your painter's tape or whatever mark you made, and then come down to the bottom, select this button to place your quilt design. So now you've placed it right in the center, and when you stitch, We'll do the pull bobbin and, um, and sew the design. When you stitch, these hearts will nest right up into your first zone and um, they'll, nest very, they'll nest perfectly and it'll look really good. So then you, again, you tie off over here, pull your bobbin, finish zone. Yes, yes and your machine is going to move. You mark the spot for your next zone and continue. And your machine moves. Move your fabric. Select OK and OK. Move your machine to exactly over your placement method. Press Center. Pull bobbin and you're ready to sew. 
And when you get to the very end, it will sew the last stitch, I mean the last zone. So I'm going to come over here to Zone Manager, and you'll see that the last zone is a little bit um, short. And when this happens, let's say um, you've measured a little too far, and you actually want your quilt to stop short. So let me go ahead and place it. Okay, and let's say my actual quilt ends right here. So move your, move your machine to where your quilt ends and select these diamonds at the bottom. And you'll see now this line went up. Don't worry about that it's pink. That's okay. Um, what that is saying is you want to stop your design right here. And that's all there is to it. Good luck.